you go to a restaurant and they have um, something that they bring out, like a bread plate or a um, like a bag of chips, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, try to just stay away from that. If it's a bread plate, have one piece of bread and like get the plate off the table. Get it, just say take this. I don't want it on the table because if you don't have self control over it, just remove the temptation. So get rid of that. Um, if it's chips, that is one of my biggest weaknesses, chips and salsa. Um, you know, you go to that restaurant, you can put hundreds of calories into your body before your meal has even come out uh, by eating lots of chips and salsa before your meal. So just if it's a weakness for you, just tell them not to even bring it out. Um, stay away from buffets. You're going to put away thousands of calories at a buffet. If you're up there and you're, you know, you see all this food and you're wanting to try everything. Some things are fried. Some things are full of butter. Some things cheeses and all of these things that are high in fat and calories. Don't even go to a buffet. Don't go to a Golden Corral or a Chinese buffet or anything like that. Unless you have a lot of self-control and you know that you're just going to go up there and get things that are... Um, on the healthier side if at all possible at a buffet or if you are going to go up there and uh, only have portion sizes and maybe only go up once but I don't know about you but when I go to a buffet I pay 12 or 13 dollars I'm not gonna go up there and just have one plate a little bit of stuff on my plate and pay that kind of money for it it's just not worth it to me so I'm not gonna go to a buffet at all it's it's a waste of money to me and all of the calories I know that I'm not just gonna get one plate and I'm gonna go up there two times and I'm then gonna go up again to get some type of a dessert so uh, stay away from buffets push those bread plates and uh, chips and salsa or whatever type of little appetizer pre-dinner thing that uh, restaurants give you complimentary sometimes and then uh, that will save you some calories as well. Another tip um, that my brother-in-law uh, taught me was if you do like to get a sweet tea or a soda or something when you go out to eat, what he would do was he would not deny himself that pleasure because he was going out and so he wanted to enjoy himself. But what he would do was uh, order like, well, my thing is a Diet Coke. So he would order his soda or his Diet Coke and then um, after that he would just get water. So he would enjoy his one glass and then after that it would just be water from there out. Now I find that I just order water altogether. I guess I'm a little bit of a penny pincher and I know how much that a drink like tea or soda would cost you at an average restaurant. You know sometimes over two dollars, two fifty at some restaurants, two nineteen, a couple bucks somewhere around there and I'm thinking okay I'm not gonna pay two dollars for one glass of soda so I just order water. But, um, or another thing is my husband usually gets uh, soda and so I'll just have a couple of sips of his. So it didn't cost me anything at all. But that's another tip, just have that one glass of soda or, or whatever that you're gonna have and then for the rest of the meal, drink water. Another thing is to uh, get your rest. Um, whenever you are sleep deprived, um, you make poorer decisions. Um, you're more likely to give in to those temptations. You feel more sluggish, tired, um, just overall fatigued. Your mind doesn't work the way that it that it should. And then you're drinking caffeine or coffee, whatever, to keep yourself pumped up and alert. And the the simple alternative is just to get enough sleep. Don't stay up really late if you find that it really keeps you tired and void of energy the next day. Go to bed early, get your rest in, you're going to make wiser decisions, your skin's going to look better, your eyes aren't going to have dark circles, your body's going to function properly because it got the proper rest that it needed to heal overnight from the injuries and the work that it had to do the day before. Get that rest, do not neglect the rest that your body deserves and needs to function every night. Um, weigh yourself regularly. I know that right now I weigh in on camera once a week, um, but the past couple of weeks I have weighed in on Monday morning as well. And the reason why is because on Sunday nights we go out to a restaurant and um, I'm always worried about the effect that eating at that restaurant had on me, would have on me the, the next, like, 
the next day like what it did for those the days of work that I had already done from Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday and then Sunday I eat now I don't go all crazy but still I take in uh, probably a lot more calories on that day than I would normally if I didn't go out to the restaurants but weigh yourself regularly that way um, and when I say regularly I mean at least once a week that way you um, look at yourself and you're like okay I, I know where I'm at and if you see that you've put on two three four pounds you know that you need to work on getting that uh, weight you need to cut out some foods for a while you need to get that weight back off that will help you to lose weight if that's what you're going for it will help you to maintain your weight if that's what you're going for so um, either way just kind of weighing yourself once a week will just let you see um, where you're at and uh, that will help you to just you know keep up with your goals um, another tip that I actually saw on another video um, I don't remember it was a while ago but they said to switch um, vegetables for uh, your other sides when you eat out um, like instead of fries get broccoli or green beans um, instead of you know like a twice stuffed baked potato or something you know go for the vegetables instead they're lower in calories there's going to be more nutrition there when I order a baked potato I always get it plain and I I don't even add salt or pepper to it um the when I go to Texas Roadhouse they've always got a lot of salt on the outside on the skin um so that's plenty of salt because they use like the coarse salt it's it's big pieces and I eat the skin and all uh, because there's a lot of fiber in the skin so um, I'm eating that um, and so add some pepper to it I don't add butter or sour cream or anything like that it's just the baked potato but um, you know you can always substitute that out as well because there's I know that there's a lot of carbohydrates in a white baked potato and um, it will turn to sugar in your body which turns to fat so um, you know but order those vegetables on the side you know try not to get anything deep fried or anything like that just switch out and those things save you a lot of calories and will help you to lose weight and when you choose vegetables for your side make those side items healthy I mean don't go for broccoli and cheese casserole just choose the broccoli you know don't go for green beans that you know are cooked in butter and or maybe bacon grease or whatever because then you're kind of defeating the purpose you know just have some green beans maybe steamed if you like it I really don't like stuff like that steamed I love broccoli steamed but not green beans you know or, or have the salad raw the more that you eat raw the more health benefits it has because cooking depletes vegetables um, or I guess anything of its nutrients so if you can eat it raw eat it raw um, if you can't and you need to cook it then try not to like season it with a lot of salt butter fat bacon grease lard I know that southern cooking is good but that's also what packs on those pounds so try to stay away from that or just save it for a treat another thing if you've watched um, any of my videos you see that I eat a lot of soup um, the reason why it's comforting and it's filling um, you can get a can of uh, Campbell's like the healthy harvest or um, the progresso the lighter it's canned soups are still high in salt um, but at this time that's not something that I'm moderating it's not something I'm regulating so um, that's I don't really look at that so much as um, this early in my diet I'm wanting to feel full still and but yet I'm wanting to be um, nourished as well so eating soups um, it fills you up you can get those cans there's about two to two and a half servings in each can I, in the ones that I get there's about two servings and I look for ones that are about 100 to 120 calories per serving and when you eat that soup if you know I just I just put the whole can in the bowl now that's eating uh, a double serving but the way I look at it, even though it's a lot, um, I generally don't finish the bowl. Um, and then it's only a couple hundred calories, 200, 240 calories. Um, and when I look at the bowl, I don't feel like, um, because I don't know, I don't eat all of it all the time. So I don't feel like that's a lot of food in my stomach at one time but it's very filling because I like to feel full. I don't like to feel hungry after I've eaten. Um, I am wanting to get away from eating so much soup because I know that I do it a lot, but right now it's just, it's easy, it's quick, it's filling, it's comforting, it works for me. So maybe you can try that out too. Um, another tip is something that I just kind of 
I remember just thinking this when I was a teenager. Um, but uh, I, when I got overweight when I was a teenager, um, at one point, I think I was 13 or 14 years old, I rapidly lost um, a lot of weight. Um, this is going to sound like a lie. And when I say it, people do not believe me. And I don't even know how it was possible. But I was... I was 13 or 14. I want to say I was more 14. And um, my church had a youth camp. And I went to youth camp. And when I went, I was a butterball. I mean, I was just round. You could have rolled me around like a steamroller. And um, I went that week. And... Yeah, oh my goodness, this is just kind of crazy to admit, but I was 14 and I was crushing on this guy and I was convinced in my mind the reason he didn't like me was because I was fat. That week, I did not eat anything but uh, a few packs of like Nabs crackers, Lance crackers, and a few cans of Mountain Dew, which were not the healthiest options. But I pretty much starved myself a week straight, ate no food at all. And it was because um, I had this crush on this guy and I just thought that he didn't like me because I was fat. So anyway, it, we were on a college campus. That's where we had um, camp at. Uh, we kind of rented out and we stayed, we rented the campus out and we stayed in the dorm rooms. And so there was a lot of walking involved. And I bet I walked miles that week, miles upon miles. And when I came back, um, I was skinny. I mean, people were blown away and shocked that I was skinny. And when I say I was skinny, what I mean is I lost 30 pounds that week. I'm not even joking. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to get some hate over that in the comment section, but I know that that is what happened. Um, the only explanation that I have um, towards that is that all of that weight that I had on me was known as baby fat. It was just baby weight. Um, you know how you just have that transformation when you're a kid sometimes. You know, you go to school with somebody and they're kind of heavy and then in the fall you come back and all of a sudden they're really skinny and it's like, what happened to this person? Uh, it's just puberty or whatever. I don't know, but it happened. I lost 30 pounds that week. It was crazy. So if I have the time, I'll be glad to like um, add a picture and show you uh, what exactly I looked like um, when I was like a really chubby kid. And then um, anyway, but the reason that I had mentioned that because when I was a teenager, I was trying to figure out a way just to kind of keep all that weight off. And um, something just came to my mind and it made so much sense. And at that time, what I did is I would stop eating past four o'clock in the afternoon. Now, when you're a teenager, you do those things, it's extreme, but I will not be doing that now. So I had like um, this mentality that um, if I wanted something, all I did is I just put it away in, um, in the fridge and then the next day I would eat it. And I would have to tell myself that the food would be there later and for some reason in my mind I had this mentality that if I didn't eat it then then it would be gone and I would never have a chance to eat it so I'm not really sure why I would think like that um, I don't think I ever had any issues in childhood where there wasn't enough food for everyone I don't know why um, my mind would think that way but I would like panic and think if I don't eat this then someone else is going to get it and I won't get it. So that's kind of crazy and almost embarrassing to admit but um, maybe there's someone who can relate and then you'll just you'll understand that it's okay just to tell yourself you know that food will be there later. You can save it. You can have it later. You can have it tomorrow. You're not going to have it this late at night but you can have it when you get up in the morning or whatever. Anyway, so that's just kind of a weird tip, but you know, it still might speak to someone, so I wanted to share it. Um, another tip is that if you do not have control over a certain food, um, get it out of your house. If you have a weakness for something, you know, even though I have a weakness for chips and salsa, it stays in my house because my kids like it a lot as well. But, um, but I mean, I'm not going to put like oatmeal cream pies in the house or um, you know, brownies or anything like that, because I'm just going to be honest. I don't have a lot of control over those types of foods when I, when they're in the house, my mind is on it. Like I want it really bad. And sooner or later you kind of end up just giving into it. 
So if you don't have control over a certain food, like it's just a weak spot for you, then just try not to put it in your house and that will automatically make it easier not to reach for it really quickly. So this kind of goes with the um, salad dressing, how I was talking about, um, or the portion sizes. Uh, pay attention to those labels. Um, this is something that is so important you've got to pay attention to the labels pay attention to what the serving size is on a package pay attention to um, how many calories it is for that serving size pay attention to you know if you're watching your fat intake or or all of that don't just look at something and because it says healthy on the front of the package think that it is um, definitely determine whether or not it's something that you want to put into your body whether it fits your needs for what you're trying to outline for your life. And so look at those labels, read those labels, do some research if you don't know what things mean um, and find out and then, um, you know, that way you'll be more knowledge and in turn, you will be able to lose weight because you're, you're just, you've got that knowledge in your mind about what you're choosing. Another tip is that just because a serving size um, is outlined on the back of a package does not mean that you have to eat all of the serving size and an example of that is peanut butter usually peanut butter serving size is about two tablespoons the peanut butter that i have i think is 180 calories for two tablespoons of peanut butter when you see um that i have eaten um like um a peanut butter and banana on toast for breakfast or something when you see that you are generally looking at only one tablespoon of peanut butter when I first started I was putting the two tablespoons on there but then I realized peanut butter is really high in calories and it's still very flavorful with just one tablespoon so keep that in mind you don't have to eat the whole serving size um, cut back if you can you know and even if you eat three quarters of the serving size you know you can do that so just try to cut back in little ways like that that's one of those little things that adds up as well another tip is just simply to use um, mustard instead of mayonnaise there's a lot of fat and calories in mayonnaise and mustard has zero calories and zero fat so if you like mustard switch it out um, for mayonnaise in in recipes if you can I don't know like you definitely don't want to make tuna fish with mustard but um, actually my daughter used to do that because she never liked mayonnaise but she loved mustard she would make her tuna fish with mustard and not mayonnaise I would not do that but if you're having a sandwich or something just try to cut out the must or the uh, mayonnaise and try the mustard instead you can try ground turkey or ground bison instead of ground beef um, it's a lot lower in calories and fat. Um, I was using turkey for a long time, but I got tired of it, so I do use ground beef again now. It's really expensive, but I do choose like the 90, 93.7. I think it's even more than that. I think it's like 94 or something. I don't know. It's, it's the one that has the least amount of fat ratio to meat. So it costs about $5 a pound, but we don't eat ground beef that often, so that makes it a little bit more affordable. That's something that you can keep in mind. If you have something um, that you want to use that is expensive to buy, for example, that ground beef at $5 a pound, just try not to use it as much. Maybe just once a week or something instead of every, every night. Um, another tip is to eat slowly. Um, that way it gives your body time to register that you have eaten. Don't forget to drink that glass of water before and after the meal along with eating slowly and it will help you to feel more satisfied. Um, and just, you know, not that you're, you're not going to get up from the table feeling hungry and you're not going to go for those seconds. Really think about it before you go for seconds. Um, you know, give your body time to register that you have eaten. And then, uh, if you still feel like you're hungry and you've got the calories to work with for the day, then go ahead and have maybe just a... I don't know, maybe half of a second portion. Sometimes if I feel like I'm wanting seconds, usually just a couple of bites of a couple of bites more would do um, instead of just getting like another plate. But um, that reminds me, um, it's not on my list, but I wanted to share with you uh, that the amount of food that's on your plate, this just makes so much sense to me. But if you're eating for two people or for three people or for four people in your serving size, then it just makes sense that you're going to be the size of two or three or four people. 
I generally eat enough um, well before January anyway I would eat enough for two to three people when I would sit down my serving size was say one handful but I would eat two two and a half three handfuls so that explains why I'm the size of two people in my weight so by simply cutting your portion size back to enough for one person to live on then you're going to be the size of one person and that just makes sense to me haven't read it anywhere no type of clinical studies or anything like that that's just something that makes sense in my mind definitely add exercise into your daily routine you can um, add those extra steps that we were talking about before um, or you can um, you know take a walk during the day do a workout video join um, a team a volleyball team a basketball team um, maybe join Little League with your kids be a coach um, there's all types of ways to incorporate activity into your day so just take the time add some exercise into every day um, you know sometimes I'll run up my stairs a couple of times you know just to get some extra leg work in or whatever but I'm trying to slowly add exercise in I do not at this point I don't want to miss you know mislead anyone at this point I do not do like a a scheduled daily exercise I do not uh, have a gym membership or anything like that but these are things that will come for me and I know that these are things that are good to add to your daily routine so my last tip is to take pictures of yourself um, you don't have to show them to anyone. It's just for your own success. Take full body pictures of yourself so you can see your transformation as uh, you are losing weight. And it's, you know, when you're going every day and you're looking in the mirror, you might not really see so much where you're losing weight. But if you've got pictures that you can compare to from day one to three months down the road and you're looking at another picture, you're going to see where you're losing weight and you're going to see where things are changing for you. But I just want you guys to be encouraged and to maybe I hope that you took something away from this video that you can use, that you can apply to your life. Um, and that will be it until Monday. I won't make a video tomorrow. I'll just like split this one into two. So I will see you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend. I'll see you then. Bye.